Hello and welcome to episode 18 Property Mastermind Podcast with Hilary Saxton. Today, again with the amazing Bob Anderson, and we are going to be talking about the current state of the property market as of today and the date is the 21st of September 2021, so current state. So this is going to be a great episode. We're going to talk about the current growth, the sales volumes, the supply, the rental rates and yields, and some other really cool, interesting stuff. So let's jump into the episode. You're going to love this one. Hey, and welcome to episode 18 the current state of the property market today with the amazing Bob Anderson, brought to you today by Property Mastermind. Property, property development, development made, made easy. easy. <laughs> so yeah, property development education. Check it out, www.propertymastermind.com.au. But today, talking about the current state of the property market, and I'm, I'm just going to give you a bit of credibility on this one, Bob. So oh, I need all the credibility I can oh, get. Go I, for it. Okay. Well, after the last 38 years in the property industry and educating people since... And still alive and kicking. And alive and kicking. Well, don't and you do, doing it. Do, what do you say to your... Yeah, exactly. Currently building something pretty incredible, a retirement village actually, which is pretty impressive stuff. But we have a membership and which is currently closed. We're about to relaunch that. So keep your eyes out for that. That's a good one to belong to. We put fantastic content in there. Bob is a wealth of knowledge. And I cover off the coaching side about keeping on with progress. So look out for that. But anyway, I've digressed already. <laughs> so each month, Bob analyzes the figures and he goes through, and he's been doing this for 18 months. So he has a, a massive awareness of what's going on in every arena. So he covers uh, market growth, the stats and sales prices. He covers volumes. He covers rental rates and yields. He covers buyers discounts. He covers, uh, he compares each city every month from last year in the last quarter and in the last month. He covers stock yields and he covers finance. So he's been doing that for 18 months. He summarizes it and he puts it together for our community and makes like a 30 minute long, what would you call that? It's just a market update. That's the name we, we give it. We, you know, we do call it the market update. Forward. Yeah, so we thought that with this month, we'll just break it down and talk about the sales volumes, the rental rates and yields, and maybe some other interesting And stay stuff. around. Don't get don't get scared off because you think it's going to be a whole bunch of statistics. No, I numbers. love it. Some people love stats and numbers, as you know, and some people go, oh. I honestly it, listen. It won't be like that. I listened to this month's one when I was in the gym on uh, Sunday, actually. I put it on uh, put it on, and had a listen and I was like, yeah, that's interesting. And then I come home with more questions about what's going on. So mm. anyway, Bob, yep. as you are the expert, tell me where you get these figures from. So how do you come up with this information that you collate for our, for our community every month? Yeah, well, RP data or Core Logic is a pretty good source of, of information and uh, we are you know, constantly getting feeds from those weekly and monthly. Also, I go outside of that. Uh, sometimes, uh, you know, banks put out stats um, and other other credible sources in the marketplace. But a lot of it comes from from RP Data, who uh, it's an international firm called Logic, so they got they got the resources to to do a lot of analytics. And so I like to track those, particularly at the moment when things change fast. I mean, if you go back two, three, four years ago, things changed, but they change slower. Mm. Things have been changing a lot faster. And so it's kind of like grey hair when you come under pressure. You haven't shot it, man. <laughs> Not at you, but like you know, you get under a bit of pressure and the greys grow faster. Oh yeah, <laughs> tell me all about that. Like say, say, in years gone by, things change slower, and so you might just look at stats every three months or four months or six months because there's not a lot of change. But these days, you know, for the last couple of years, things things change monthly, things change weekly. Yeah, it's going crazy, and so it's good to good to look at it. I remember the at the workshops. How many I've been to now? Twenty odd. How many oh, have you poor done? Thing. How many have you done? You, oh, me, uh, three day live workshops. Seven, Pe- seventy something. I think I worked out once. Wow, that's not bad. Uh, so I remember sitting. Well, maybe I haven't done twenty. Can't have, maybe I have. I'm not sure. It's irrelevant. But uh, <laughs> I, I feel so sorry for you. <laughs> oh, it's one thing delivering them. It's another thing sitting through them. Oh. Even though they're absolutely brilliant. Well, I'm part and of we've them launched now. many developers from them. Well, you've created many millionaires, Bob. So it's, it's, not a, it's not a bad claim to fame. 
But I remember sitting, and, and at the beginning, you talk about the residential property market of Australia, and it was always, it never moved for like for a long time. It was sitting the at 7. The value of the point, residential market in Australia it used to be fairly, well, 7. relatively 2, steady. wasn't it? Well, yeah, look, it used to hover around that. So what that means is the value of, yeah, like the of the residential market all lumbered together was around 7.2 trillion. Trillion this is, and yeah. that's a lot of numbers. I think a trillion has 12 zeros. Wow. A bit like your bank account. Oh, please. <laughs> so, um, yeah, look, it, it, it was just very moderately going up, the value of residential real estate in Australia. And remember some of the market updates we did, say, about a year ago, let's say, what, about July, August 2020? What was mm. the number then? It was around, you know, that it went, it dropped back a little bit. It, it was around $7 trillion. Mm. Oh, so it, ca- it went back? A it dropped back of- a little bit during COVID. Right. You know, there's a little bit of... And, and what also, was that due to, Bob? Well, there was a couple of things that brought that about. Obviously, remember COVID wasn't that long ago. But what would affect the numbers? Was that mean that was that the, because prices went down? Yeah, property? Oh, well, in some places they kept going up, in some places they came down a bit. Uh, and, and prior to that, remember, there's a there was a correction in the Melbourne and Sydney market at the end of seventeen. Uh, pro- you know, some prices came back eight, ten, twelve percent, thirteen percent after some huge gains. Of course, it was just a correction that you know, no big deal. So that affects the value. And then you've got – see, when you're talking about the value of residential real estate in Australia and the numbers go up, let's say, and they have been going up, that's partly caused by growth in the market, the value of properties going up, but it's also caused by new properties coming on the market. And mm. so that's what increases the value of residential real, real estate. And about a year ago, it was sitting around that $7 trillion mark. And I remember there's a big hullabaloo. Remember about maybe four months ago? Oh, you got, we got to – Eight trillion. We got to eight trillion. It was in the newspapers. It was popping out everywhere. But we were talking about it. It was like, yeah. oh my goodness, it's got to eight trillion. But I've never been there before. You had to change your slides. I did <laughs> for your workshops. <laughs> and what is it now? This is uh, hold on, sit tight. Well, if you're what, driving, brace yourself. Tell me what was the number for the end of August up till the end of August. Oh, I know eight, what it. Uh, Seven point uh, eight point nine. Eight point nine. We're nearly at nine trillion. We might be there now. That was uh, that was like. Three weeks ago. Yeah, nearly three weeks ago. $8.9 trillion. That's mm. gone up from seven. Yeah, so so that's um, that's a big number. I don't know what $8.9 trillion looks like, but I reckon- it Looks like grains of sand. In the next month or two, anyway, at least, it'll hit $9 trillion. And, and, of course, everybody will know, RP Data will put it out there and it'll be on the news. We've hit $9 trillion, having- and then the real estate agents will, well. will dine out on that and they'll bump you know, the prices yeah. up and, and there goes the buyer's market still. You got to put I that, mean the seller's market. Yeah, like you've got to put that into perspective. That's the residential property market. You know, if you think about the commercial property market, and that's like all the industrial, mm. commercial, uh, retail, all the big capital cities, all the buildings, all the shopping centres, the Westfields, if you added all the commercial property value in Australia, it's just under one trillion, and residential is almost nine. So that, there's not much difference. Really. I mean, they're, they're massive numbers. They yes. just got heaps of noughts. But but in, like in comparison, mm. the residential market is about nine times the commercial market. Is that a really unusual, Bob? Like, is oh, it, I don't think so. It's always sort of been roughly something like that, you know. Has the difference always been similar? So the, the or or is are we saying so? Has commercial gone up as well? Oh yeah, yeah. Everything goes so up. So it's all just jumped the same. Yeah, it's all it's all gone up. But but some people, you know, you think a lot of value of real estate, and and there is a lot in commercial property. And you look, you know, you stand in the city and you look up at 70, 80 story buildings. That's all part of the commercial. Mm. Yet residential is still you know, ten times the commercial value. So yeah. Wow, crazy stuff. Yeah, it is. So I know where we live. The price of residential. It's gone nuts, like everywhere, I suppose. Yeah. Bob, talk us through those because I know that you pretty much know them inside out. <laughs> oh yeah, I mean we've seen some incredible growth in the last in the last twelve months, haven't we? In the, mm. in, you know, I mean just nationally, it's gone up about eighteen point four percent for a year. That's huge growth, mm. and that's not equal, is no, it? No, no. If you go around the cities, it, it varies. You know, like Sydney, I think what's Sydney about twenty two point four or something like that. It's gone up. 20.9, 22, something around that number for the whole, for the last 12 months. I mean, that's incredible. That's a cu- almost 2% a month. And if you think somewhere like Sydney's got the highest values of property, I mean, that's a lot of dollars. People so does are, Sid- uh, Sydney has the highest values in Australia? Yeah. And think of like people go to bed at night and they wake up the next day and, and their, their property has gone up. God knows, I, I can't work it out in my head. It's, it's more than they're earning. 
I wish I wish I owned property in Sydney. Yeah, you know, jobs that for the last twelve months, you know, for most people, particularly like in places like Sydney and Melbourne, even Brisbane to agree, I guess, they're waking up wealthier, but they're making more money out of their house than they are out of their um, out of their job. No wonder so many people want to get into property development. Yeah, yeah. And if you've got a couple of investment properties and you wake up the next morning and you think, well, you know, this week, like today I might earn, you know, three hundred dollars today at work, let's say. Uh, but then you work out, you know, if you've got, say, two investment properties in your house you live in, you think, oh, my God, I've made so much more mm. sort of doing nothing. Mm. But, of course, the smart work's already been done in the buying. So, yeah, it's pretty pretty incredible. But So we've got a few slides in front of us that we can refute to. But, Bob, talk us through the annual and quarterly change in Sydney. Yeah, so Sydney Sydney's pretty amazing. I mean, just, just in August alone it went up 1.8% for one month. But just for the quarter, last three months, 64 and 20.9% for the year. That's a lot. When did it last do that? Do you remember? Or like when oh, has there been an increase like that? I can't remember exactly, but, you know, it'd probably be. It I'll, has done it though, hasn't it? It has, Actually, yeah, but not too oh, often. Not too, no. <laughs> Thank goodness. <laughs> you can't live with that sort of growth forever. Or, yeah. you, know, if, you know, in three years' time, the average property would be about $3 million. You know, no one could afford it. But um, it's getting, it, that's pretty it's amazing. It's getting like that in Sydney anyway, isn't it? Oh, yeah. Like if you think about it, a lot of people in Sydney, well, Sydney, Melbourne, even, you know, they're making more money out of their houses at the moment than they are out of their job. You know, job's almost like a part-time thing because you make more money out of your house. Imagine if you had two investment properties and a house in Sydney, how, how much you must make every day. You go to sleep and you wake up the next morning. And there's plenty and, oh, of people that have I made this much money. It. I didn't even do it while I was asleep. Mm. Probably don't feel like going to work. <laughs> Yeah, the whole make around what three or four hundred dollars a day <laughs> from your job, make more than that he- from your heaps properties. more out of your property. Yeah, yeah fantastic. but that's, I mean that doesn't go on forever. But I, I, even in the first six months this year, we've had high growth. You know, a bit of the heat's gone out, but hey, it's still going up. But like even Melbourne, you know, Melbourne has is, is gone up four percent in the last quarter. In the last quarter, and remember, like we're talking about periods of lockdown. Yeah, Sydney, Sydney, and Melbourne in the last quarter, and and yet there's still this growth. And that's interesting. So with the lockdown, you know, and it's gone up four percent, and there's been such a less amount of, of stock on the market. Yeah. Wow. You know, more than as we speak, I think it's more than half the population of Australia is in lockdown still. Wow. It, and this is what the property market is still doing. And Melbourne oh was goodness. up thirteen percent for the year, so it's more than one percent a month. That's that's pretty amazing stuff. All capital cities at the moment, other than Perth and Darwin, are running at record highs mm. in terms of value. And they have for month on month. And uh, yeah, it's pretty amazing stuff when you look back at some of the headlines, you know, 12, 15 months ago, that, you know, those scare, scary headlines and we look what's actually happened. It's just amazing. So, so what about Brisbane? Where are they? Oh, good old Brizzy, you know. It's it's not the size of Sydney or Melbourne, but it's been tracking along okay, just looking at the stock. Are we about half the size? No, least. Oh. Are, are we two million? Yeah, a couple of million in Brisbane, yeah, but, you know, it's it's probably, I don't know, half or 40% the population of Sydney. It's hard to say where the boundaries are. You know, we hear all different numbers for population, mm. but... Look, it's uh, it's been up six point one percent for the quarter, which is pretty amazing. Eighteen point three percent for the year. That's the biggest kick good old Brizzy's had in a long time, but uh, record high again. You know, we often hear because we're talking with people we, and we work with people in every state, so it's interesting to hear. But we, you had a call from um, Erica the other day. She has been through the mentoring program and still keeps in touch with Bob. And she said she went to an auction and a property should have gone for – what did she think it should well, have gone for? Well, she thought about 800000 And that was what it, she considered. It wasn't even a development site, right? No. It was an older house. When I say older, probably built in the 50s and 60s on just a, a normal residential lot. And thought, council rules would would mean that laws would mean that you couldn't develop. Yeah. You could only put a single dwelling. Yeah, yeah. I mean, the most you could do is just – Keep it or knock it down and build a new house. Looking at eight hundred thousand potentially went for one point one. Yeah, crazy. Yeah, what do you do? I mean, how do you even make sense out of that? But there you go. And she was it's like, reality. <laughs> do we do it? What, what did she say? Blimmin' Sydney siders. She was like, oh, she people was, from Sydney, New South Wales are coming up here and they're bumping was, up our prices. Yeah, that was in Brisbane. Yeah, she was blaming that, you know. In, 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 and look, how long ago, it's not all that long ago, say in Sydney, when, when Sydney people were saying, oh, look, we've got all these overseas people coming over and, and buying stuff and bumping our prices up and putting the locals out of the market. And then Brisbane people are saying, oh, Sydney people are coming up here and bumping locals out of the market. Oh, yeah, it's just realistic. But it, didn't we talk about that in the last podcast? or maybe the one before, we actually talked about the fact that once the, you know, the gates open to the rest of the world and we have people coming here, it's going to change things again. Yeah, and we don't hear many people talking about that because traditionally 60% of our population growth 
Our population growth is the big driver normally of, mm. you know, uh, price growth. 60% traditionally has come from overseas, 40%, you know, local organic growth. We haven't had any overseas. There's plenty of organic because of the lockdowns. <laughs> yeah, probably, yeah. But, but I mean, what's going to happen when the gates open up again and, and international people want to come here? I mean, you hardly ever hear about that. What's that going to do? I don't know. It'll be interesting. Yeah, will be. It'll be interesting. You'd want to be in property, that's what I say. Mm, so what about Adelaide, Bob? Adelaide's been a great performer all the way through COVID. They're up 5.3 for the quarter and 17.9 for the year. So Adelaide's been strong, 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 month on month, month on month. Record high again, of course, Adelaide. I think we've got one of our past mentoring students who went through the program and he's featuring in our newsletter this week as our uh, member spotlight. Yeah. But he has chosen it because he grew up in Adelaide, mm. even though he doesn't live there. Uh, that's where he's developing. And he's got a nice nice wee niche market going on and perfect timing. W- mm. You know, when's the best time to develop property? 20 years ago. <laughs> Get into it then. But, you know, you might as well do it now. Yep. But isn't it exciting for people that have got in and are developing and where they're developing, prices are increasing, and mm. it's exciting for, you know, young families, like life-changing boys. Yeah, 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 assuming you can get into the market. And, uh, you know, as we're seeing with, perhaps we talk about it now or later, but first home buyers who have been a, a big driving force in the last year or two, is starting to get out of their price range now. And mm. so the number of first home buyers coming into the market is diminishing. Mm. It's still strong, but, mm. but you know. But it is diminishing. Yeah, so Adelaide 17.9 for the, for the year. For the year, yeah, amazing, yeah. It's been a great performer. Um, who else have we got? Uh, uh, Hobart. Oh, good. Oh, Hobart. We were there. By the way, I was just admiring your earrings. Those These are my black Hobart. And white numbers. These are my Hobart earrings. We were there last week. We were down in Hobart. Beautiful Hobart. Hobart. Yes. Cool Hobart. What a great spot. What oh, a great it place. It was beautiful. Yeah, and it's been a great performer all the way through the COVID period of 2020. We are pretty lucky actually while we were there, mm. caught up with uh, somebody who, a couple of people in our, that have been through the program. And, um, As we do. Yeah, it was great. We went up for dinner and, and actually Mark drove us around. He went through the mentoring program and he's now pretty much working in development. And he showed us his latest. What has he got? A four pack, isn't it? It's a four pack. He's doing a four pack, yeah, as well. And, and he's involved in a, in a joint venture on some commercial industrial uh, stuff as well. Yeah. But he drove us around and showed us what's going on, which is really cool to have a local, you mm. know. And it's not a huge place, Hobart. So it's great to have a good look around. Yeah. And just see the growth. I didn't. There was no more commercial land available yet. They were waiting for land to be released. Yeah, not waiting for new releases in that sort of light industrial sort of zoning, you know. Uh, Yep, it's crazy well, stuff. It is. It is all a bit crazy at the moment. Twenty four point five percent Hobart's gone up in the tw- last twelve in months. the last twelve months. That's a quarter almost. I know. That's incredible. I know. I know. It is. The, and they're at obviously a record high. Yeah, and they, one of those great performers it was um, Adelaide Hobart and the ACT performed exceptionally well. Why is that, Bob? Well, strong markets. I mean, nationally, there's sort of there's an undersupply. And, and really, they had not the same effects of COVID, for instance, that Melbourne had. I mean, mm. Melbourne's, I think, in its sixth lockdown and, and Sydney's in an extended lockdown. And compare that to Hobart, pretty much once we got off the plane and walked out of the airport, <laughs> Threw it, was, masks away. <laughs> it was masks off for a week. It was amazing. Yeah. It was so nice to smile at people. And, mm. not, and people don't always smile back because that's just human nature. And I just couldn't help but smile. I'm like, you don't know how lucky you are. Yeah, no, we we're telling that to everybody. When, yeah. Yeah, You're very lucky to be able to. All we had to do is just check into a premise when we went in, but we didn't have to wear a mask. That was crazy. Yeah. So, yeah, Hobart is going great guns. Great guns. We talked about the ACT uh, and Darwin. Well, Darwin, remember I said Darwin and Perth aren't at new highs, but they're coming off Mm. incredible lows. They hit the bottom of the market. Darwin and Perth in about mid 2014, and there was a you know overall drop of about thirty percent in values, mm. and they've been uh, working their way back up. They're well more than half their way back up, so they've been rising for quite a while, but they're still a way off off their previous peaks. Mm. But even in Darwin, I think uh, they were up twenty two percent for the year. Wow, that's oh, people in Darwin must be like stoked off a <laughs> you know off a low, yeah, but really going well. But they did fall in this last quarter by one one percent, zero point one. What is it? I think for the month uh, they they dropped back a little bit. But remember, a month is a very short period of time. Mm. I don't look at monthlies. You know, you can get stats weekly now. Mm. And that's too short a period of time, a week, mm. even a month. At the moment, although things are moving fast, I sort of tend to look more at a quarter than a month. Yeah. My quarters are fine, half yearly, years, yeah. And the ACT, Bob? Great performer. 
in spite of the fact that all our politicians live there. <laughs> Nothing personal? No, not at all, no. But look, it's been up. It was up 7.3% for the quarter alone and 225 for the year. So great ACT. I, I used to, I've been involved in a number of developments down there mm. years gone by, quite a few years ago now. But um, you used to fly down there and stay for a week and then fly back to Brisbane, didn't yeah, you? Because you didn't like the cold. Oh, the cold. I can remember getting up in the morning in winter in the ACT and uh, where I used to stay. It was a lovely old sort of style hotel, but you could never get a car park under cover, so it'd, I'd, it'd be out in the car park. It'd be caked in ice. Mm. And Bob, uh, I'm from New Zealand. That's normal. Mm, normal for you. <laughs> yeah. Minus eight degrees. I used to get out there with a paint scraper and scrape the ice off my windscreen before I drove to work. Nuts. Incredible. Couldn't cope. No. Nah. Couldn't uh, cope. We winded eight degrees in the winter here. A, a couple of mornings it got to eight in the sunshine coast. We're like, oh, it's freezing. Ooh, yeah. So yeah. ACT powering on. Mm, up 22.5 for the, in the past year. Yeah. Crazy stuff. Yep. Wonderful. But great if you're in property. Yeah, great if you're in property. <laughs> if you're Even in property. better if you're in property development. So, Bob, with the price increases and in, in most capital cities are getting close to a quarter or at least 20%. What was the lowest? Oh, who was the lowest? Oh, I can't remember. Yeah, I don't know. But whatever it was, it was high. Yeah, it was really high. What's that doing to people that are renting and the renting market? And if you're listening to this now and you're, and you're renting. and you're- Yeah, so there has been a, a fair amount of rental growth. I think the the average rental growth across the whole nation uh, in the last 12 months has been about like between 8 and 9%. Wow. So that's going up. But what you often find, uh, maybe we'll get on to yields soon, but what you often find when property values are, are rising rapidly, rents lag behind. Mm, I've because, heard you say that numerous times. Well, if times. you think of most rental contracts, yes, like the average rental contract these days is probably a 12 months. Like you don't see a lot of six-month rental, you know, lease contracts, mm. rental contracts. They're mostly 12 and some are 24 months. So a lot of a lot of rental contracts were written earlier, maybe on average six, eight, nine months ago, whatever it is. And so we had a lot of price growth, but it hasn't caught up. It always lags. You know, you could – some people say uh, rental – lags about six months behind price growth, but it does lag mm. because price growth is like immediate and and rentals only get renewed. Yeah, it depends on the, the, the renewal times. Yeah, exactly. So there's always that lag. But e- even in spite of that, they've gone up about between 8 and 9%. Crikey. In, and that's in the only, last 12 months. that will only be due to which leases have been rewritten. So yeah. there, there could be some changes to that number. Watch this space. Yeah, and look, in the rural areas particularly, I think the, the average – Rental growth in rural areas in the last 12 months is over 12%. Wow. Uh, nationally, it's averaged 82 and I think the capital cities were more like about 67 So still a lot of growth in, in the rental market. Do you see that moving much further, Bob? It's going to keep going up mm. uh, because it's lagging growth and growth is still happening. Like gro- Growth is slowing down a bit. Like The first six months, it was very high and it is starting to, to slow down a bit. And so rental growth will, but rental growth still isn't caught up. So, yeah, it will, it will Do you continue see that, to trend you know, upwards. Does it frighten you? I mean, we're all lucky. All, all, of, our, all of our family have their own homes. We've got, we've got one to go. You know, does it frighten you with, with the younger people of today? You know, how, how will they find getting into properties and how they may need to do it differently? Well, when you see prices going up the way they, they have gone up, uh, you, you have to – Think about younger people coming into the market that don't have property, mm. people that aren't in a position to buy, and and what they've done, they sat on the sidelines and they've watched property just go zoom, mm. and, and they must think, my God, am I ever going to get into it? And no, look, affordability has always been an issue. Mm. The government gesticulate, oh yes, it's a you know problem, problem, you know, but the the issue is a lot of the value in a property is taxes, GST. Stamp duty is a biggie. I mean, there is taxes on taxes on taxes in property and there is a lot that could be done that isn't done. But anyway, that's another subject for another day. But you do, which, you know, in a way, digressing for one moment, property development is a great way for people to get their kids into the market at mm. a good price. And I'm talking about people that could do a small development, uh, create a property at raw cost like we do as developers and there are structures whereby your children could come into that property at raw cost. Mm. It's valued at retail price and that can give them a real boost straight away. Yeah. So they could get – they might come into a $500,000 property that's valued at 500000 that was created at, say, 410 400. or 420 mm. or four hundred, mm. uh, and that gap, which is the profit in a project, 
could be their deposit. And mm. There are ways of doing that. Well, that's a subject for another day. But parents who develop properties can set their children up very quickly rather than wait for their children to, to you know, to save it. Or even if they have, you know, children in their 20s who are interested in, or 30s or whatever, interested in getting into property, they can support them to do it, mm. you know. Yeah, yeah there's lots, could, of, lots, lots that can lots be of, done in that regard. Yeah. yeah, and we see some, like, crazy ages. I think, remember when we did the Sydney workshop this year in June live? That was exciting. Just got a, just got a live in-person one in before. We got two. We did Sydney, Brisbane, and yeah. we've just moved Melbourne for the sixth time. But anyway, mm. looking at five, six, seven November now. Yep. But when we did the Sydney workshop, we had four people in their 20s, four Mm. young people there. Mm. And my daughter happened to be one of them. She was over here from New Zealand. And it was a a bit of a wake-up call for her that people so young would be into property development. It was interesting because all their parents were as well. That's exactly right. Yeah, they were. there's some pretty cool people in our community that are developing property and they're so young. And they're not just doing like, you know, the odd splitter and, you know, which is, you know, with the, the simple stuff. They've, they've kind of moved on some of them, which yeah. is so exciting. Yeah, and some younger people are joint venturing with their parents like I just talked about. Mm. Mm. The youngest person I've ever had in the mentoring program was an 18-year-old girl and she was pretty switched on. Mm. She had the mind of a 30-year-old. Uh, but she... She did enjoy the support of her father. Yeah. Uh, who, who loved property and, and, you know, did help out. But yeah, look, yes, it is. We get quite a few father daughter. Actually, at that workshop, father there was daughters. a father daughter. Yeah. You know, Tony and Sarinda. Um, yeah, yeah. It's a common combo. Uh, yeah, well, it's... We've had mothers and sons and, and all sorts of combinations, but uh, yeah, father and father and daughters. Uh, anyway, we were, we've digressed. Totally we, were, digressed. we were on uh, rentals. Chill. Yeah, okay, yeah. so and now maybe the gross rental yields, Bob. Well, yen- rental yields obviously are going to tighten up because what we've got, we've got values going up in property. Let's just define a rental yield. Keep, let's keep it simple. The amount of rent as a percentage of the value of the property, that's what we call a rental yield. And because properties are going up faster than rents are going up, the yield – Yields are going, going down, down, right? Uh, because they're just not keeping up. So gross rental yields nationally are about three point three percent, which is pretty low. What are the, what are they normally nationally, Bob? Oh, uh, when when the market sort of we- reached e- equilibrium, there. Well, they're probably. I mean, it's more like a state by state thing, really. They're probably yeah. up around four percent, you know, on average. But you know, you've got cities like Sydney and Melbourne. They're the big powerhouses of real estate in Australia because of their population. I love size. that word, powerhouse. They are. <laughs> uh, they also have shown the, the highest growth over many, many years mm. and they're also the highest valued uh, real estate. So yields tend to be lower in those cities but growth tends to be higher. I think that was my big – when I was listening to it at the gym the other day when I listened to your whole breakdown of the month, that was my come home. I was like – I didn't actually realise that. that. That made perfect sense to me at the mm. time. You know. Yeah, often in in real estate, we got this trade off between growth and yield. Yes. You know, if we want high, you know, high yield, or do we want high growth? You know, which yep. one are we going to go? And and no, it's a bit like a seesaw. You can't get them both. But at the moment, just looking ar- around Sydney, it's about two point five percent, and Melbourne two point eight. Now that's. Uh, that's a low yield. Well, yeah. But we've seen some incredible growth. Yeah, getting not, growth. Not yeah. just in percentages, but like when you relate that to dollar growth, it's quite amazing. Brisbane, I think, was about uh, four, Adelaide 4.1. The rest are around, around that four other than Darwin. Darwin's always been pretty high yield in the way it's going as well. Uh, oh, but, because the property prices are so low and the rentals, mm, the, the rental is probably not even high, but it yeah, makes it a good yield. There's been quite a, a lot of growth there. Yeah. So in comparison to values, it's, it's about 6% gross yield. That's interesting. Yeah, it's a bit of a standalone Darwin. But mm. Darwin is a standalone. No mm. offence to the Darwin people. have got some good friends up there, but it's quite a small small place in comparison. I've never been there. What's the population? I th- guessing around 100, I think, 100,000 or thereabouts, but it's the size of a big suburb in Sydney. Right. So it, it can have, move, you know, substantial movements because of that, you mm. know. There's, but, yeah, like, that, there you go. So so let's talk about vendor discount rates. And I loved learning about vendor discount rates when I first got into property development. I was like, but what is a vendor discount rate? So explain that one. Mm. So we often It was hear- like one of those, ah, moments, of course. Aha. Yeah, aha. <laughs> We often hear commentators say, oh, it's a buyer's market or it's a seller's market. In that respect, at the moment, it has to be a seller's, seller's market. market. You know, there's, there's buyers fighting over properties and, and there's sellers, 
you know, they're almost becoming, holding out for good prices. <laughs> properties are almost becoming like toilet paper did at the start of COVID. I know. <laughs> yeah, well, they, has there been any fights at auctions lately? I don't – probably. We've, well, we've seen them in the – you know, we saw some you, fights they, in the aisles. Let us, let us know. Someone sent <laughs> me an Has email. anybody attended an auction – where there's two bidders and they've taken to fisticuffs. Oh, I have them. That would be scary stuff. But it's probably beginning to happen. It could happen. We yes. might, Maybe we need security guards at auction soon. Who knows? Anyway. Yeah, so, so, so a vendor discount is when the seller has to discount what they initially put their hmm. um, property on the market for. Yeah, exactly. I didn't even know it was a thing. It's, it's the difference between what a property gets listed for and what it sells for. Mm. What what is that price drop? Mm. If it's listed at eight hundred and it sells at seven eighty, it's a twenty thousand dollar discount. We can work it out on eight hundred, mm. and it's is monitored. Two and a half percent. That's that's the interesting part. Somebody tracks <laughs> these figures. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they do. And so, obviously, the stronger the market, the quicker stuff sells. The, the more less, it is in a seller's market, the less the, the discount because they don't have to discount. Mm. They don't have to negotiate. Mm. There's ten people want to buy their property. Mm. They don't have to drop the price. And so at the moment, if you compare it to, say, a year ago, let's say August 21 to August 20, a couple of numbers, Canberra's now 2% down from 2.9. Just pick a couple of random ones. Uh, Sydney's at 2.7% discount compared to 36 a year ago. Melbourne's about the same. Brisbane's about the same. So we're seeing that there's less discounting mm. because the market's even stronger than it was so a year ago. People are almost getting what they want in a lot of cases. There's a small movement. Mm. There's a small movement. So what happened in Darwin, Bob? Because there has been a big shift there. Yeah. Well, in the last 12 months, a, a year ago, the discount was about 5.6% in Darwin. Now it's down to 33 So that's been, of, of the cities, that's the biggest drop, if you like. Right. Which means the market's tightened up. up. Awesome. Yeah. But, but of course, it it was off a, a base a year ago where there was a bigger discount rate because the market wasn't as strong. Uh, that's been the biggest. But, you know, if you think nationally, the discount rate's about 2%, 2.8%. A lot of people are putting property on oh, the market. way over anyway. Yeah. I mean, a lot oh, of people are just I auctioning get... for a start. Yeah. But the people that aren't auctioning, the people that are putting a price on a property, they're saying, and who knows what something's really worth at the moment. They might say, oh, look, it's worth $800. i am going to put it on an 8 70 because someone's probably going to pay it. So the actual listed price is ahead of the market. So the vendor discount rates are not necessarily that correct? Well, they're, they're, they're correct Stick statistically. Bit, yes. But because of the market, what it is at the moment, the yeah. list price is ahead of the market. In a normal market in equilibrium, mm. you sort of list around what it's worth. Mm. You might go a little bit over, knowing there's a bit of a negotiating factor, but but now they're jumping way ahead of, mm. of what it is. Who knows what it's worth? Mm. And even then there's only a 2.8%. So that's pretty incredible. And, Bob, as far as uh, auctions go, wh- how does that affect vendor discounts? Well, often there's – well, with <laughs> with auctions at the moment, uh, it's starting to loosen up. So uh, as of this week, with Melbourne, you can have one-on-one inspection. So people can actually go and inspect. But I see last, last weekend alone in Sydney, 80% clearance rate. So 80% of auctions were cleared under the hammer. In Sydney, and, and they've been in lockdown for quite a while mm. in a really tough market. I think there's about seven or eight hundred auctions, so it, it's a you know, it's still volumes are down to what they are. I know someone in our mentoring program did a virtual property inspection, so yeah. people must have logged on and they went round via Zoom. Yeah, Crazy stuff. Yeah, yeah. The thing at the moment is, it's the old five minute economics degree: mm. supply and demand. Mm. There's strong demand and limited supply, and mm. that's what we've got at the moment. In terms of the amount of stock on the market, it's the lowest volume in five five years and it's continually low. I think at the moment, nationally, there's about 127,000 properties for sale. Now, that's a bit of a weird number. It doesn't really mean much. About 127,422. <laughs> Approximately, give it a take. You know, oh, one just got listed, it just went up. Yeah. One just got sold, it just went down. <laughs> yeah. So um, that's that's low, mm. you know, traditionally low, below the fight. The, you know, the long-term average is probably up around 240,000 listings or something like that. Uh, and, you know, 200, 240, it's, it sort of varies, but it's it's in that range and we're down to about 127. So same old story when you've got limited supply and, and a strong desire to buy, it's going to force it up. And you can't put values on. You know, there's, there's a local agent whom we know here, traditionally she never used to sell by auction. 
Uh, she always sold by private treaty. She, mm. she get a, a sole agency or an exclusive listing and it would be listed at a price. Mm. For the last three or four months, every property I've seen her sell, and she does move property, has all been by auction. She, she, she just, I, I suppose she's just saying, look, I don't know what What's to list thing? the property at. Yeah. Because I could say a property's listed at 900 and someone m- might pay a million. Well, like what, what we just said when, when Erica went to that, o- that yeah. auction. Yeah, exactly. So a lot of properties, even in traditional areas like Brisbane that don't have many auctions, mm. uh, are having a lot okay. more auctions. Yeah. Well, Bob, I think we've probably talked a little bit about property for quite a while now. You go I? for hours I've, talking about I know. Money, so. we, were, we were actually going to talk about more and I'm like, crikey, people will tune <laughs> out. They would have finished their workout at the gym or their drive to work or whatever or however you listen to this. Do, or a, you couple, could be... do a couple of extra sets. <laughs> exactly. Might be a good thing. <laughs> Might be or, uh, yeah, who knows. But let's, we'll wind it up, I think. Hmm. But Hope interesting. interesting. Oh, I do. It's so interesting. So, so the thing about numbers is there's a, always a story behind the numbers. Mm. Just looking at numbers as numbers isn't very interesting, but it, it's it's the, it's the story behind it mm. and how they're all interwoven. I think mm. that's what I find interesting. And and and, beti- and behind each one of those stories is a person's individual story. Yeah. Like you know, there's thousands that, of them. They, yeah, I've just, you know talked about a couple of people today. Janika went through via. An open home, an inspection mm-hmm. over Zoom, or or you know, just people doing things differently, crazy stuff. Anyway, giving away a copy of Bob's book, The Secrets of Property Millionaires Exposed. That's there really he is. Bob's chapter. I oh, know. I'm a small part of the book. Uh, yes, of these amazing authors. This week, it's going to somebody who commented on the bottom of the supportive partner episode, which was episode I think 16, and it was this is see Cry Can too. This is for you. So send me an email, hillary at propertymastermind.com.au, and you will get one of these in the post. How Congrats. cool will that be? Congrats to you. It's a great read, and it's a it's a lot of people's different strategies on how you can make money with property. Clearly, Bob's will be about development because that's his preferred. No secret there. <laughs> that's his MO. But, yeah, so just flick me an email, and I'll get that to you. And if you would like to win a copy of this book, then please feel free to comment or send us an email, write us a review on Apple Podcasts, and you know, take a screenshot and send that through to me. I will send one out to you. So I think in winding up, Bob, thank you for your just the amazing efforts that you put into summarising these figures every month. And you know, we've just talked about them for a month, but the fact that you analyse them, like you've just got this massive knowledge, and it's just um, incredible what you actually do yes. in the property community. Thanks for that. Always yeah. looking for trends, trying to look forward. Yeah, and that's probably why you're so good at sort of thinking what's going, telling us what's going to happen next. I always trust what he says, uh, Mr. Google. So if you're interested in learning more about property development, we've got a free masterclass on the 16th of October from 9 to 1. And that's for people who might want to learn about the process of property development. And before, it's what what would you, what's the, what's the thing with well, the masterclass? I think it's a good intro. I think if people are looking at perhaps getting into property development, want to know a bit more about it, mm. would like to understand the process, mm. then I think that's perfect for those sorts of people. And then they can make up a their mind well this looks good what's next for me yeah so we will explain at the end how you could carry on if you wanted to work with us or you might just like bob said want to see if this is for you we are giving away at the masterclass a our free online course oh my goodness worth three thousand yeah, three thousand dollars. So we're, we're giving, giving it away, away for free. Yeah, if you come along to the masterclass, so register for that. I think there'll be a, a link at the bottom of this if you're interested in learning more about property development. Uh, register for that, and you could actually win the online course for free. And we are actually running a three day online workshop too in November, so that's coming up too. Look out for that. Stay tuned. Stay tuned. But once again, Bob, thanks so much. You're a wealth of knowledge. Love your work. Always love coming on your podcast. Well, you're on them most of the time. All right, everyone. Thanks. See you later. Bye. Catch you soon.